Hi there, and today we come to the end of our series of Easter Reflections, uh, Obedient to Death, Exalted to the Highest Place. I hope you found them a blessing. They've been great uh, to listen to each day, and I've certainly got encouragement from them myself. And we're ending with the passage from which the title of this series was taken. It's always been a favourite passage of mine. So let's read together and just allow these words just to, um, to live in us again today. Philippians 2 verses 1 to 13. I'm going to read quite a few verses here because actually this is such a rich passage of scripture for each one of us. If you've any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that's above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my dear friends, as you always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. What a glorious passage of scripture that is. Do you know, you'll often hear people talk or argue, incorrectly of course, that the idea that, that Jesus was the son of God and that he was divine and that he rose from the dead resurrection is quite a late idea in Christian thought and, and only was taken on by the church many years after Jesus lived on earth. But the evidence is so very different. This letter written by Paul is agreed by scholars to have been written perhaps 30 years or less even from the date of the resurrection. People would say, but memory fails, fails us and we get, we get facts wrong. But does it? I was thinking about how I still remember vividly certain things that happened. For instance, I remember coming in from cutting the grass, switching on the television on the 11th of September 2001, 20 years ago, sitting down with a cup of coffee and to my horror, watching the details of 9-11 uh, unfold on my television set. I remember 24 years ago, uh, sitting in our front room, Karen and I in Sheffield, and watching the events surrounding Princess Diana's death with Charles Graham with us at that time. Charles has done some songs for us at our church recently. I remember being in my rooms uh, in digs at Bible College uh, over 40 years ago uh, and listening on the radio with horror to find out that John Lennon had been assassinated. I was in a little room in, uh, in Croxley Green near Watford at the time. Shall I go on? 1969, I remember at the age of 10, being in a classroom with my friends, watching on a little black and white television as we watched Neil Armstrong uh, set, set foot on the, on the moon. As a seven-year-old, 55 years ago, I remember the first football match I ever watched was the World Cup final, all the way through. I'd seen bits beforehand on a very hot, warm July day. And later that year, I remember eating my tea at, uh, 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 to the horror of uh, watching the Abba Van disaster unfold 55 years ago. And actually, my earliest TV memories are of JFK's assassination, which happened when I was just four years old. Or Winston Churchill's funeral when I was five. I remember those events vividly. You see, significant events are things that still live on in our memories. They're vivid to us. Uh, they don't change. 
in fact, actually, you know, we can still remember how we felt and, and what we were even doing around those, those times when those things happened. This passage of scripture makes it very clear to us. You can say what you like about the Christian faith, but the truth is that the very earliest believers believed that Jesus Christ truly has risen from the dead and was the son of God. Um, and we can't get away from that fact. Um, the early church really believed this. In fact, as the passage has been studied, um, if you look at verses 6 to 11, this marvellous bit where, which starts with the verse, um, our attitude being the same as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God. Actually, the style of, of the whole letter changes. And Paul introduces what many people believe is an early Christian hymn or a, 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 a confession, as we'd call it, a statement of faith that was either sung. It's certainly poetry. It's not the prose that he's written the rest of the letter in. Um, and there's this marvellous passage about the nature of the person of Christ. Some believe that this was a very, very early Christian hymn that was sung at uh, the breaking of bread uh, and the agape meals of the early church. And it was written in Aramaic, they reckon, rather than in Greek. I mean, we don't know that. That could be conjecture. What we do know is that here's Paul, only 30 years after Jesus had died, who is absolutely convinced of the remarkable, unique nature of Jesus' work of salvation on the cross. How he didn't hold on to, grasp literally with white knuckles, onto deity, onto his rightful place. But he was willing to let go of that position because of his great love for us. How he emptied himself, how he chose the limitation so he could be fully human as well as fully God. And we know from scripture that Jesus got tired, he got thirsty, he needed to rest, he needed sleep, he needed food. He humbled himself. When you think that the great God would come and limit himself to such a nature as ours, that is true humility. And his obedience even took him to the place of a horrific death on the cross, as this song goes. But his identification with us, with sinful human, human uh, mankind, led to his glorious exaltation as he triumphs over sin through the death of the, on the cross. He wins. He's the victor. He's the conqueror. And he now truly is our King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And one day, whether people accept it or not today, one day every knee will bow and every knee, every person, every tongue will acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. What a saviour. Savior. Jesus deserves our gratitude, our thanks, our praise. But more than that, as Paul starts this passage in chapter two, he reminds us that Jesus's example should be the way we live and choose to follow uh, him through our lives ourselves. He says, look, if we're going to grasp hold of the truth and the power of this message of the cross, then our attitude needs to be the same as that of Christ Jesus. Our attitude to status, to power, to position, to control. Our attitude in terms of being fully obedient to God's will in our lives. Our willingness to be humble. Our willingness to die to self. This is the way of the cross. But it's also the way of life. Let's pray. Lord Jesus. In reading this passage today, we thank you so much for your finished work. What a glorious redemption we have and how powerful this story is, the message that you should come to us in such a way as you did and live the life you lived and die the death that you did for us. Lord, we say thank you today. Help us to live in the good of what you've done for us. The new life that is in us by the power of your spirit, that resurrection life in us, Lord, may it manifest itself in our 
in our willingness to lay down our lives, our willingness to obey you, our willingness to let go of those things that we choose to want to hold on to in our lives. Lord, help us. Help us to live for you, the one who died for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Shall we say the grace together? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. listening and watching these uh, different reflections each day. God bless you. Hopefully it won't be too long before we do some more.